everyone, and welcome to another deep dive. Today, um, we're tackling something that's, uh, well, it's a bit of a mouthful. Okay. Performance enablement and guidance systems. That's a mouthful. It is. But we'll call it PNGS for short. Much better. And, you know, we're really talking about making sure the right information gets to the right people at the right time. Exactly. And this isn't just like your, you know, your typical GPS system or something. Yeah. This is way more involved, way more useful. We're diving into push-pull performance enablement and guidance systems by Guy W. Wallace. Wait, what is this? It is. It's dense, but trust me, it's really packed with a lot of good stuff. So are you ready to decode PNGS with us? Absolutely. Yeah. And you're right. This isn't just about, you know, like throwing information to people and just hoping for the best. Right. It's really about equipping them to actually perform well, to do their jobs well. And that's what I think is so cool about this whole PNGS approach. It's <laughs> not just about storing knowledge just for the sake of knowledge, right? Yeah. It's about making that knowledge work for us or more specifically for the people who need it to do their jobs effectively. Exactly. Traditional knowledge management, sometimes it focuses too much on just gathering and storing information. But PGS goes beyond that. It's about right. understanding the specific outputs and tasks required in a job. Okay. And then making sure that people have the guidance and the resources they need to actually accomplish those tasks. Yeah. And right at the moment of need. I love where this is going. So instead of making someone search for the right tool in a messy toolbox. You give it to them. You hand it right to them. Exactly. Yeah. A PNGS hands them exactly what they need right at the moment. They need to loosen that bolt. Oh, now that's what I call service. Right. And speaking of tools, this book breaks down PNGS support into three main categories. It's like having a well-stocked toolkit. I like it. You've got performance guides, learning experiences, and workflow resources. Yeah. It's like having the right tool for whatever job you're doing. Exactly. And just like you need all the essential tools in a toolkit, right? You need all three of these mm. for a PNGS to truly enable performance. Because think about it. You can have the best instruction manual ever. Right. But if you don't actually have the tools or the materials to do the work, it's not going to be very helpful. It's like trying to bake a cake with just a recipe, but you don't have an oven. You don't have flour. You don't have eggs. Exactly. You just can't do it. Chaos in the kitchen. So we've got our metaphorical toolkit, right? What's next? So that's where the push versus pull guidance comes in. That's another key concept from this material. Okay. So are we proactively pushing this information out to people? Or are they seeking it out and pulling it when they need it? It's like choosing your delivery method. Right. Right. It's uh -huh. like, do you send a carrier pigeon with a message or do you set up a secure drop-off point? Right. And just like in that analogy, there's no one right answer. It all depends on the situation. Okay, so give us an example. When would a push strategy be the best approach? So let's imagine you're in a really high stakes environment, like a factory floor with heavy machinery. Okay. In that kind of situation, you would not want someone fumbling around trying to find the right safety procedure in the middle of an emergency. That's like trying to Google how to escape a burning building while you're standing in it. That's exactly. Why. Not a good time for that. <laughs> so in those critical situations, a push strategy is really essential. Yeah. You want to make sure those procedures are readily available at all times. Yeah. Maybe even posted in multiple locations for easy access. It's like having the fire extinguisher instructions already printed on the wall exactly. rather than hidden away in a drawer somewhere. Exactly. Make it easy. Makes total sense. So when would a pull approach be more effective? So think about a situation where the information is constantly changing. Okay. Like maybe you're working with the latest market data or you're doing some type of research in a fast moving field. Right. If you tried to do a push in that situation, you might actually end up giving people outdated information. It'd be like giving someone a brand new printed map, but then they start this massive highway construction project yeah. right as they're leaving. All right. All those roads are changed. All those carefully highlighted routes, useless. Exactly. So a pull approach where users can just access the most up-to-date version whenever they need it makes a lot more sense in those really dynamic situations. Okay. So the real key here is analysis. We need to understand the context. Uh, Who nuds the information when they need it, how often it changes, and then we can decide what's going to be the most effective approach. Push, pull, or maybe even some kind of hybrid approach. Right. It's about making that decision based on the specific needs. It's like figuring out how to ship a package, right? You wouldn't send something fragile the same way you would send something small and sturdy. That's a great way to put it. And the book actually goes into a lot of detail about that decision-making process, which is fascinating. 
But for now, let's move on to another really crucial aspect of building an effective PNGS, and that is the five-tier repository structure. Okay, so this is where we start organizing all of the knowledge, right? Exactly. It reminds me of how a well-organized library is so much more than just a building full of books. Right. It's about arranging them in a way that makes sense so you can actually find what you need. Absolutely. Otherwise, it's just overwhelming. It's just a jumble. A jumble. Exactly. And this five-tier structure is all about making sure those performance support materials are organized for action. Okay. So it's not random. There's a specific logic to it. All right. Well, walk us through it. What are we looking at here with these five tiers? So the first tier kind of sets the stage. It's high-level information about the organization, mm -hmm. the mission, values, that kind of big picture stuff. Okay. But the real magic happens in tiers two, four, and five. Oh, that's where you find those really specific, actionable performance guides. Okay. And they're organized by the processes they support. Which makes sense. You want to be able to find them when you need them. Exactly. Think uh -huh. of it like the different sections in a library. You've got your fiction, your nonfiction, your reference materials. Yeah. Everything has a place. Right. And in a PNGS, those performance guides are categorized by the specific work processes that they relate to. Gotcha. So if you're working on, let's say, the customer onboarding process, you know exactly where to go to find the guidance that you need for that specific process. You wouldn't go looking for a cookbook in the history section. Right. You'd never find it. But even with the best organizational structure in the world, a pen just still needs something else to keep it running smoothly. And that is governance. Oh, yes. Now, I'll admit, when I first saw that word, I thought, well, here comes the boring part. I know that sounds a little dry. But this book really opened my eyes to how crucial governance is for a PenGS to actually work. It really is the glue that holds the whole system together. Because without it? Without clear governance, a PenGS can just become complete chaos. Oh, yeah. You've got outdated information, conflicting guidance, duplicate materials floating around. It'd be a mess. It'd be like that infamous junk drawer everyone has. Everybody's got one. Full of random stuff that you might need someday, but impossible to find anything when you actually need it. Exactly. Mm. And the three-tier governance system that's outlined in this book gives you a really clear framework for avoiding that mess. Okay. You've got the board of governors at the top, you've got your advisory councils in the middle, and then you've got your project steering teams who are doing the hands-on work. So it's like having a clear chain of command to keep everything running smoothly. Exactly. So the board of governors are like the library board. They make sure the library is actually serving the needs of the community. That's a great way to think about it. They're setting the overall strategy and making sure that the PNGS aligns with the organization's goals and priorities. Precisely. Then you've got your advisory councils, and they're like the librarians who specialize in certain subjects. Right. They represent different departments or different functional areas. Well, and they provide input on what kind of performance support is needed in their specific areas. They're the ones making sure their sections are well stocked and up to date. Exactly. And finally, you've got your project steering teams. And they're like the library staff that are working on a special exhibit or a new community outreach program. Yeah. They oversee specific... PNGS development projects. Oh, yeah. They make sure that they're on track and delivering what's needed. It's a team effort. It is. It's a really effective system because yeah. it ensures that everyone's voice is heard and that the PNGS is truly aligned with the organization's needs. That's right. And it's at every level. At every level. Mm. But even with a great governance system in place, this book emphasizes how important it is to avoid content overload. It's not just about creating content for the sake of creating content. It's about being strategic and focusing on ROI, right? Absolutely. Yeah. There's a great example in the book about a company that had 27 different modules on active listening. Wait, 27? Were they obsessed with active listening? Apparently, they were really passionate about it. Yeah. But the point is that none of those modules were tailored to specific job roles or performance contexts. Oh. It was just a ton of generic content. And it's Highly likely, very little of it was actually effective. Uh, right. PNGS is about targeting those areas where performance support will have the biggest impact, not just creating a bunch of content just to have it. Quality over quantity. Exactly. It's about providing the right guidance at the right time, not just drowning people in a sea of information. I like it too. And speaking of guidance, this book goes really deep on performance guides, which are kind of like the heart of the PNGS system. They are essential. There is said they're like those, uh, you know, those perfectly timed hints that you get in a video game tutorial. Oh, yeah. They pop up 
right when you're about to face some challenging task. Right. And they give you just enough information at just the right moment. It's way better than getting stuck and then rage quitting. Exactly. So instead of making someone, you know, try to sift through a mountain of manuals mm. or scroll endlessly through online forums trying to find the answer. Right, just trying to piece it all together themselves. Exactly. Performance guides deliver very targeted support. I like it. Whether it's a step-by-step -step checklist or a flow chart or even like a quick video tutorial, whatever format works best for that particular piece of information. It's all about making it as easy as possible, right? So they can find what they need and get back to work. Exactly. Make it efficient. And this book even gets into choosing how you're going to deliver those guides. I mean, are we talking printed checklists? Are we talking digital documents, videos, interpretive dance? Well, maybe not interpretive dance. But uh, though that would be memorable. It would. Mm. But you're right. The media selection is a key consideration. Mm. And the book really emphasizes that it's not just about presenting the information clearly. Okay. It's about understanding the thought process that goes into actually performing that task. So it's not just about giving them a recipe, right? Right. It's about explaining why you're doing each step. Exactly. Why are we creaming this butter and sugar together? Why are we sifting the flour? Mm. All the important things. There's a reason for all of it. Mm. And the book actually goes into something called cognitive task analysis. Okay. Which is basically about mapping out not just the steps involved in a process, but the thinking that goes on behind the scenes. That's fascinating. So we're not just giving them the what and the how, we're also giving them the why. The why is so important. Which I think is really cool. Yeah, it empowers them to develop a deeper understanding. Yes. And become more self-sufficient. Yes. Instead of being completely reliant on these guides, it, it helps them actually learn and grow. The goal is to help them develop their own expertise. Become independent problem solvers. Exactly. Now that brings us to another really crucial aspect of PNGS, and that is evaluation. Because it's not enough to just create these amazing performance guides and then just hope for the best, right? You've got to know if they're working. We've got to know, are we actually seeing improvements? Are people using them? Are they finding them helpful? Are they even looking at them? Exactly. And this book actually gives some really insightful guidance on how to gather that data yeah. and then use it to make the system even better. Continuous improvement. So it's not set it and forget it. You've got to keep your finger on the pulse, make sure it's working. Absolutely. And it's not just about tracking you know, usage or completion rates. Right. It's about measuring the impact on actual business outcomes. That's what matters. Are we seeing improvements in productivity, efficiency, customer satisfaction? Those are the ultimate indicators. Those are the things that matter. Yeah, are we actually moving the needle? Exactly. So we're connecting the dots between the support materials and the real world results. 100%. Now we've covered a lot of ground here. We have. We've talked about push-pull strategies, five-tier repositories, governance, evaluation, choosing the right media for your performance guides? It's a lot to consider. It's a lot. It's clear that building an effective PNGS requires a lot of planning and implementation. And ongoing refinement. It really is. It's like building a house. You need the foundation, you need the floor plan, and then you gotta, you know, keep making adjustments along the way to make sure everything is working the way it should be. That's a great analogy. Yeah. And just like building a house, building an effective PNGS is a process. Yeah. It's not just a one-time project. Right. So, you know, for our listeners out there who are thinking, okay, this all sounds great, but how do I actually put this into practice? How do I apply this in my own work? What would you say is the one key takeaway that you really hope listeners walk away with today? I think the most important thing is that mindset shift. From simply providing information to actually enabling performance. Okay. Don't just throw information at people and hope for the best. Yeah. Right? Think about the specific tasks and challenges that they face in their roles and how you can give them the guidance and resources they need at the right time to help them be successful. So it's about moving from that need to know to need to act approach. Exactly. Instead of just telling them what they need to know, we're giving them the power to use it. Yes, empower them to act on it. Yeah, exactly. And that's what PNGS is all about. It's such a powerful framework for thinking about performance enablement. And, you know, it can really be applied in so many different contexts, sure. from large organizations to small teams, even to your own personal productivity if you really want to get granular with it. Absolutely. So if you are looking for a way to boost productivity, improve performance, empower your team, PNGS is definitely worth looking into. 100%.
This book really gave us a lot to think about. Yeah. From those push-pull strategies and tiered repositories to the importance of governance, evaluation, choosing the right media for your performance guides. It all ties together. It really does. It's all connected. Well, hey, thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the world of PNGS. It was my pleasure. We hope you found it insightful, maybe even a little bit exciting. And until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep performing at your best. Thank you.